gentlemen, I think we're going to start our meeting if that's okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, Ms. Marco, would you please call the roll? Mr. Tristo? Present. Mr. Gidrelli is absent. Mrs. Villa Herrera is absent. Mr. Signor? Present. And Mr. Thomas? Present. Mr. Would, you, would you all please stand for the pledge? And I would ask you to uh, remain standing after the pledge. Andrew, would you please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, uh, while it's not on the agenda, I just want to make mention of a few, of a few comments, and if any of the other board members have comments, thanks. So, uh, you know, it'll be the 20th anniversary of 9-11, as we're all fully aware, the media has covered that um, extensively. Uh, you know, I think about my grandkids who have no idea what that means, and I think about some of the young people who really probably don't understand what that really means either. Uh, but for those of us who very likely remember exactly what we were doing that day, I, I know I do, and I'm sure everybody in this room does. Uh, but you know, you think about the, the needless loss of thousands of lives, not just there, but you know, from our military and all the actions taken you know, after 9-11 you know, by, by a group of cowardly people who uh, just uh, don't like our way of life, don't appreciate our freedoms uh, like we all do. So I'd just like us to just take a moment of silence uh, for, for them and for their families. Thank you. And uh, also, uh, the, the Office Club uh, on 9-11 will have a, uh, a remembrance ceremony at uh, noon. So anyone who wants to attend you know, on Curry Road. Also, you know, 10 years ago, the people who live here in this part of our community and many members of the public who came in and volunteered and helped uh, family and friends and to uh, you know, risk uh, their, their stead, if you will, as well, uh, to come here. Uh, public officials, uh, and uh, I, uh, you know, a couple years ago, spoke with uh, the late Fran Del Gallo, he was supervisor at that time, and he had many, many stories about the amount of work and effort and uh, frankly tears and, 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 and just the devastation that people suffer here from the storms of Irene and Lee. And uh, this, this fire company, uh, Potter Kill and others, uh, but you know, they're, I'll say that the, the chief ones in my mind because they're right here, you know, dealing again with their family and friends uh, right up front, and their own uh, their own trials and tribulations of, of those events here. So I'd like to just uh, have give them a, just a round of applause for all of their effort, and uh, we know that one thing, nature is more powerful than we are, and we should never uh, forget. That. With that, please have a seat. Now, I, I know there's a lot of people that want to speak this evening, and I, and I don't want to, again, have, have, have you say that I was being rude. I have, I have a meeting at 8 o'clock that I cannot, uh, I cannot miss. Um, and I would like that if I, if I could ask those of you who want to speak this evening, if you could keep your comments to those four minutes, it would, it would help us to uh, get that along. And I apologize for that, but I, I, I have to, uh, I have another engagement. So at this time, a public comment privilege of the floor. So Ms. Markham, who's first? Mike Cohn. I'm losing my voice. Well, Mr. Sam, I'm sorry. You want the order? No. Okay. But uh, on August 28th of last year, myself and the committee submitted a visual detailing of our 
first hit the road system, all 2.7 miles of it. And we requested a meeting with the town as a preliminary to explain our needs. But the visuals speak for themselves. We covered every linear foot with mosaics, with potholes, with broken pavement that had been patched over patched over patched. And if you spent all the time patching, you could have had new roads on that in the last 25 years. 25 years ago, Elmi Cogneshaw, a neighbor of mine, and I presented with my wife, presented a photo presentation of all roads. And we had Harry Gordon at the time with the Irene Park. We met with the Katy Corporation, and this is what I kind of expected from you guys. Uh, and two weeks later, they were there with the machines. And we had to repay them. It was supposed to be forever payment, self-healing. Uh, so 25 years later, and somebody's been doing core tests. You can see from the sign, the West Hill sign, all the way up the hill, they're doing core step of the uh, checks of the uh, road bed. But we never heard a reply from you guys. You blew us off. And call it COVID, but you could have, at least out of respect, in a business-like manner, sent us a reply to our letter of request authored by Mike Lynch, our president of the West Hill Development Corporation. That was the very least you could do. And I had to come down several times to reclaim our presentation because I needed it for other purposes. But I think there was negligence on your part. It blew us off. And uh, if you want to make another appointment with you, the highway department, very uh, more to uh, to address these concerns again. West Hills the unique community is stated on our side. It goes back to 1948. But uh, in 1951, we had national news. This magazine, Living, and. What I like about this, it was after the war, and, and all the people where there's a housing shortage. And here you see a couple, and the wife's in on the decisions. And it's all about houses in West Hill. The interiors, exteriors. Here's the K-Day home down on Cricket Lane. And all these living magazines are available through Syracuse University Library. And then they went back, this is 1951. Then they went back in 1960. And they readdressed all the other. So we made national news. West Hill was intended to be like Levittown in Long Island, over a thousand homes. But West Hill didn't like the cookie cutter approach. And we had a huge 240 acre plot that we were going to have a thousand homes up there. And think of what Rotterdam missed out on, because you didn't have the facilities then to accept our proposal then. And now we can't even get roads to be there. But, uh, all that said, uh, we ended up with a lot of clay and shale. And all the sand went down on Campbell Road. But what we got out of it was an aquifer with big boulders underneath us that got me Congressional. They named, named uh, Post and Kill after him for his research. He got tremendous water. We, of 84 homes, invested in a $400,000 well and pump system to all our houses. We just apply our own water. And we have our own sewers. You don't do anything except plow our roads, basically, and pass them and pick up our brush. And we want to have a little more respect and a little more involvement for the town for our needs. Mr. Cole? I'd like to have a meeting. Thanks. Have your secretary call me. We, we will. We will. Mr. Cole, at that meeting, if you want, if you want, you want highway superintendent there. Clearly, we'll have one or two board members there. Um, we have a new DPW coordinator being appointed tonight. I feel that you should be there. Is there anybody else you would like to see at that well, meeting? I would go tomorrow. I'm 
Yeah, well, individual contributor. Right, yeah, I'm just I want to I want to get a list to make yeah, sure that instead of just meeting okay. with everybody you yeah, want okay. there. But I can't speak for us till I have to go through the board. Okay. Well, on your yeah. side, you could invite you on, but as far as the town board, the town hall, DPW Highway Department board members, anybody else from town hall you would like to see there? Okay. Oh, well, 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 why don't we just do we'll kind of have, we'll have this number? Okay. I right. contact right. you, Mr. Coleman. We'll, we'll get and something set up. And sure. My final, my final question. When John Polino was supervisor, he had contracted a research person on special needs where they would go and they, they'd do it, they'd hunt for funding. Do you have such a person on your staff? So for roadway funding, there's, there's at this point, there's no grant. Opportunities that we're aware of, but if you don't, if you don't mind, I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but we have a lot of other people to right. speak this evening. All right, and I promise next, you we'll get in touch my with you. The final question is uh, what about uh, uh, what about funding from uh, from the tax base? Uh, well, that's, and again, that's, that's, uh, let's, have, let's have a robust discussion. Okay. Okay. And we'll, 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 we'll Sir, would you just mind verifying that I wrote your phone number down correctly? Okay. Uh, who's next, Ms. Martin? Andrew Nicola? Andrew. It's 703. It's 703. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Hi. Good evening. I want to thank the town board for coming to visit us. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't think any other um, government will come out and, like, the, uh, Congress does not go to Seattle to meet once a year. <laughs> they stay in Washington, so thank you for coming to see us. Okay, I'm Andrea Coppola, and I live at 625 River Road. Um, I'm the chairperson of the Conservation Advisory Council, and but you may not understand what we're trying to do as a, as a conservation um, council. We try to it let the town and the people know uh, about invasive species and things that are, are uh, being mishandled or things that shouldn't, like um, plants that shouldn't be there and uh, animals. At any rate, uh, our little group would like to know if there is a designated space for us, if, if the Kmart building becomes a fact, can we have our space for filing cabinets, work areas, a copying machine, our, our equipment? Also, second thing, uh, we, we were on every other month meeting schedule for 2021 due to the pandemic. We'd like two other meetings, and uh, I spoke to Sharon or Dana, I can't remember. And uh, they said we had to clear it through the town board. And I just spoke to you, Mr. Thomasone, and you said, well, we could probably decide by ourselves. But <laughs> at any rate, we'd like to add two more meetings for the rest of the year. The third thing, um, the Rotterdam Conservation Advisory Council did say you really stipend them. $300 for each member. Each We're supposed to have seven members. We only have five now. Um, and we're missing our stipend for at least three years, at least. So I'd like to know if, if and I, oh, also I was told about seven or eight years ago if I submitted a budget that we would receive our stipend. And I've been faithful about um, submitting budgets every year. So, okay, thanks. You're welcome. So, uh, I'll, I'll respond to that too. That's, that's okay. Yeah. Gail okay. Mahala? Thank you very much. Let's yeah, no, travel fast. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Good evening, and thank you for letting me uh, speak my concerns and make some comments I have. Um, fortunately, I saw the agenda today, so I got close to kind of late um, because I would like to make some comments and concerns that I have about the request to change the zoning for the multifamily residential community uh, that's proposed at 2625 Curve Road. Um, this item went before the Planning Commission on August 16th, and 
was reviewed and the members overwhelmingly opposed the request for the change in the zoning. I wanted to bring that out. In addition, as part of the Town of Rotterdam Comprehensive Plan Update, a community survey summary was done just over a year and a half ago. It was posted February 27th through April 1st of 2020. And it's my understanding there are 223 responses. Uh, the survey and the summary, everything is posted on the town's website. Well, as part of that survey, uh, the responders were asked to respond with the most discouraged land uses for the town of Rotterdam. These included at 77% residential high density residential areas, which include apartments, condos, and high rise structures. 88% had a positive encouragement for single family housing. In addition, 70, excuse me, 94% um, encourage the protection of natural areas and open space. This is rather than talk about. This is the town of Rotterdam. I also would like to address several negative collateral impacts, changing the zoning to allow for construction of this proposed multifamily residential community at that location on Curry Road, again, it's 2625 would have on the surrounding area and residential neighborhood. First is the immediate increase in traffic to an already high volume area of Curry Road. That's just east of the traffic circle at Hamburg and Carmen. Traffic normally can get backed up at least to I-890 and beyond certain times of the day. The single entrance to this proposed complex would force all traffic to and from that multifamily residential community to one location on Curry Road, one location in and out. In addition, the adjoining single family residential area where I live would risk seeing an increase in cut through traffic within our neighborhoods. And this is where we walk with our kids and we take our dogs for walks. Another in negative impact in changing the zoning would be to allow for the development of a multi-housing complex in a single family residential area. I live in the adjoining single dwelling residential neighborhood just northeast of this proposed site, and I do not want to see an apartment complex next door. My final concern is the resulting impact of construction would have on the adjoining environmental area, which has underground streams and an already high water table. The construction of the necessary structure framework could result in diverting that water to an already oversaturated area, my backyard. These are just a few of the negative impacts changing the zoning to allow for the proposed construction at the site modded in, but have on the surrounding area. For that reason, I ask that the board disapprove the request to change the zoning for the site. There are many other sites within Rotterdam that are better suited for a multi-family residential community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gail, do you want that to the record? Um, I added to it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Molly Collins. Thank you. Molly Collins, 2241 Amsterdam Avenue. I was unable to look at tonight's agenda until this morning. Even at that, there was no documentation given to the interpreters. How is the public to know what is before the board when so little information is given at such a late date? We have already been written up in the Daily Gazette about our lack of transparency. I hope that before the next town board meeting, the residents of Rotterdam have a draft agenda with documentation that they can read and reply to several days before the actual meeting. 
I find it very interesting that at this meeting, you are calling for a public hearing and lead agency concerning the apartment complex to be located at 2625 Curry Road. At the August 16, 2021 Planning Commission meeting, this apartment complex was given a negative recommendation. The vote was six against and one for. I wonder how all of you taken the time to review the Planning Commission minutes of that meeting before bringing these two resolutions to the floor. We had many of the local residents present at that meeting, and we have been and had we been allowed to speak, we would have heard their concerns. I also wonder how a public hearing can be called for when none of the residents have access to the minutes of that meeting. Is this board aware that we already have 340 apartments located within six tenths of a mile of the proposed complex? Do you realize that if this complex is allowed, we will have 548 apartments within six tenths of a mile, which just happens to be at the entrance and exit of I-890 and the New York State Thruway. How congested do you want the Hamburg Street Curry Road area to become? I also wondered how you can dismiss the work of the Planning Commission. By bringing, it, by bringing the project up, you have more or less told the members of the Planning Commission that their input doesn't matter. The research and time that they spend when looking at the project is for nothing. The residents living on Eugene Drive, Ridgey Avenue, Gary Avenue, East Campbell Road, Fayette Drive, Owen Road, Barber Drive, Fort Hunter Road, Valentine Drive, Curry Road, Caldecott, Greenpoint, Amsterdam, 1st and 2nd Avenue, that's 15 streets, have voiced their dislike of this project. They are concerned about the impact on traffic, the school district, and the aging infrastructure. Do the residents of this town really have to come out again to the public hearing to voice their concerns when the Planning Commission has already given it a negative recommendation? Will this issue be continually brought up until enough residents get discouraged and give up? I ask the Town Board to seriously consider the recommendation made by your own Planning Commission and the residents that will be impacted by this complex. Rather than bring up old business, why not have a public hearing on whether or not the residents of Rotterdam want top stores in our community? From what I gather, there is a 90-day window for the town to either accept or opt out of the program. My understanding is that we can opt out and take a longer look at the ramifications of allowing top stores within our town, and we will still have the ability to join in later. It would be nice if this it would be nice if. Um, this were on the agenda and a public hearing schedule instead of a project that was giving resounding negative recommendations by the Senate Commission. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, time. This is the last subject item. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Okay. Um, Nobody likes the buildings. <laughs> 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 I'm Clementine Zawatsky, known as Clem. I live at 227 Jericho Drive in West Hill. Uh, Michael is down the street from me. Mike's right, we have a unique community in the sense that if you all pay for your water bills, you get water provided by the town. We don't. We pay those bills happily to keep good will with the town. We provide our own water and pay for it. We hire our own operators. Our system is provided back up by the state. We are fully qualified to do what we do. But we're paying you something we get nothing for. Now, as concerns the road, is. Mike pointed out, um, there's something less than a wonderful response from you guys and we're paying taxes twice, water and now roads. We do get plowed in the winter time, but if school isn't in session, we don't get plowed until very late or the next day. We have an aging community, and that's kind of a dangerous situation. I mean, I've got a high wheel vehicle. I can get out if I have to, but not everybody does. Everybody does. That aspect of the taxes for the roads is only one part of it, but another part of that is if we're risking unplowed roads or unplowed roads, so are the ambulances and the police department who have to come in and service of us as an aging community. So it's a, it's a consideration for everybody, not just West Hill. It's those wonderful people who provide those services to the whole town. As for the roads, Mike was right about the surface of the roads. We have about nine corners or turns in West Hill. Every one of them is no longer a road. It's a series of repairs. Those repairs didn't last this winter. We had huge problems, and these repairs that have just been done, thank you, won't last this winter. 
and I do mean every one of those corners is falling apart. Um, there is no road surface integrity left. The straight roads are full of parallel lines, which means they are spreading. There is no fabric holding the roads together any longer. I'm not sure what you guys want to do about this, except to know from our point of view, this is getting to be a real neighborhood problem. And um, I'd like to say that the next time you see us, we're going to be here with cakes and cookies to say thank you for serving us, because I hope that's what it will be. It might not be. You're going to have some angry people, and I would like to avoid that. I'm a member of the West Hill Council, so I can, to some extent, speak for the community. And I'm here to say that we're getting a bit restless. So if you would please consider our begging you to come in and fix the roads, we really are doing the next approach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Jack Dotson. Good evening, Jack Dotson, 1311 Cipriana Terrace. Uh, I guess I want to follow up. You know, Molly did bring it up. Uh, can you guys provide us an explanation on what is to deal with the backup to the agendas? I know this is like the second meeting. I had a call two weeks ago for a previous one to get the documentation. Is there been a change in policy? Can that just be addressed? I mean, obviously, I've been coming to these meetings for years. You guys have done a pretty good job. Steve, I'll compliment you. I've read many 350 to 600 page agendas. I like that information. It's very, make, makes me informed when I come here. So whatever this policy change has been, I just encourage you guys to work it out and hopefully we can start getting the documentation again. Because I think the public, as you know, we, we need to see that documentation. To come up here and have an informed conversation with you regarding what's on the agenda, okay? Um, so a couple things, there was two meetings back. Uh, there was, uh, Again, I didn't get the back up, but there was a, a statement in there about consolidating sewer districts. I'd just like to know if that's a consideration. Uh, and somehow that got confused with consolidating a, a special um, storm sewer district, but, but I believe that uh, there's a consideration in for uh, consolidating sewer districts. And I just would like to know that beforehand, if that's a consideration. And if it is, I'm hoping that there's going to be a detailed engineering study that will evaluate that so we can see how the money is going to be transferred around uh, for all these different sewer districts. So it's all right to uh, Kudos. I think we worked out an agreement on paving, uh, which is the benefit for everyone here, particularly people in uh, West Hill. I don't know how much they're going to get paid this time. but. Uh, you know, paving has always been a passion of mine. Um, you did a great study. I think it needs to get, you need, you need to get back to it. I know you're contributing about $100,000 in uh, money to CHIPS, you know. Um, I've been here several times. We need to increase our money for paving. You know, and it can't be 100000 As we talked, it needs to be in the half million to a million dollar range. If we want to get back to a plan where we're rotating on a 15 or 20 year basis, paving all our roads. Um, in the top plan, I believe we're getting close to a draft report. It would be nice for the public to be able to see that soon. That would be great. Um, Curry Road 2625, I think that's going to run similar to a Vista Square. Uh, I guess my request for the board for that is it's under your senior review. I think there's going to be a lot of controversy for that project. That I request that you consider scoping again for that project so that uh, the public does have the opportunity to vet all their concerns relative to that very large project. So I think scoping would be mandatory in secret for that project. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I guess, you know, I got to say it, you know, 20, uh, you know, all these apartments coming into town, I'd ask you guys to consider a moratorium in light of the fact that the town plan is coming out. Uh, we have not seen and, and I think uh, member from the public did talk to you tonight about our uh, resounding 70 some odd percent, um, you know, people that contributed to comments to the comp plan were opposed to these apartment complexes. You know, I understand we need uh, housing, okay, there's housing shortness, but, but the town board needs to evaluate comp plan relative to all these apartment complexes and light of our infrastructure. And, uh, you know, a moratorium would certainly allow you guys the time to consider the big picture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bill Corral. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Hi, Bill Hoblock with Richfield Capital. We're the uh, applicant for 2625 Curry Road. Uh, we were last here for the rezone in July. We did uh, refer to the Planning Commission, received a negative recommendation before I just address a couple of those Planning Commission comments. Let me just say a few things about the uh, changes on application. Uh, and business score is brought up, and, and we're very proud of our contribution to the town by redeveloping the longest and uh, decaying eyesore in the middle of town into uh, a vibrant multifamily community, the residents of Vista Square. And quality is the key to that, and that's really what exactly we want to do on 2625 Curry. Uh, the vast majority of the residents of Vista Square are uh, seniors and seniors from Rotterdam. And we have a waiting list of seniors who want to stay in Rotterdam, and that's exactly what we provide. Uh, what we're proposing on 2625 Curry Road, it's in your book, so I'm not going to get into it which has been online and also uh, submitted around to other board members. And there the application, uh, aerial, site plans, et cetera. But uh, we're proposing a change of zone that will allow the same quality multifamily community further up on Curry Road, just like we did uh, at 1410 Curry Road, really to provide a uh, quality housing option mainly for the seniors who want to stay in Rotterdam. The change of zone is appropriate just for a couple quick reasons I'll mention. Uh, first, that's in the book. It's a very awkward piece of land. It's split zoned at 2625 Curry Road. has three different uh, zoning components to it. And for that reason, mainly it stayed vacant while everything else has been developed around it and is sat uh, barely generating any type of tax revenue whatsoever to the town of Rotterdam. Um, second, it's located on Curry Road, the busiest thoroughfare in the town of uh, Rotterdam. And just like this is where ideally uh, situated for a quality multifamily community. Third, multifamily already exists in that area, so from a planning and land use perspective, it's appropriate. Uh, fourth, it really is not alluring at all for a single family home development. It's the main reason to stay vacant and empty. Uh, it's surrounded by high intensity non residential uses. Uh, we have two gas stations right there, a power line next to us, an assortment of various commercial operations. Uh, much of the land around it, in fact, all of it mainly is zoned commercial, um, so it really is something that has not been zoned properly. Um, we're asking for a, a rezone that will uh, facilitate a proper development of it and an increase in the town tax base. It's also a very classic transition piece when you look at the aerial from single family homes the neighbors mentioned into your commercial and high intensity uh, uses all through that entire roundabout area. Um, and just let me touch on lastly, and I'll sit down, is um, the issues raised during the Planning Commission uh, meeting that we had, too, over the summer. We heard repeatedly that the change of zone, quote, checks all the boxes from the zoning and land use uh, perspective. Uh, however, uh, one of the things was too many apartments in the town, which we heard tonight. I'd like to stress, not all apartment communities are alike, just like any other use, whether it's single family, whether it's retail, whatever, don't lump every use together because that's just not accurate. This will be a high quality multifamily community just like Vista Square that is geared towards seniors that will keep seniors in this town and provide an option to stay here. Uh, one planning commission member asked that we build a gated luxury single family home community with tennis courts and pools. This property has been zoned for single family for years and years and years and nothing has ever been done with it. It's not a desirable single family home community. That's why it stays vacant. Another member went the exact opposite way and said, well, why don't you build an affordable single family home community? The same reason. It's not a appropriate single family home zone uh, land. Um, very importantly, we did hear that there's too much, too many units on there. So what we're proposing tonight, instead of 208 units, is actually to drop down to 182 lose an entire building, pull the buildings away from uh, the adjacent neighborhood and create parkland there. So I'll be submitting the revised site plan to the town board. That will help uh, allay those concerns. And then lastly, uh, traffic. There were comments at the Planning Commission about this proposal generating three to 400 uh, additional cars. Uh, at the public hearing, I'll have Craig Manning, uh, the traffic engineer, uh, who did all of the traffic improvements in that part of town. Uh, who will show that the additional uh, trips generated during AM peak hours are 65 cars and PM peak is 85. So the three to 400 cars just isn't accurate and, and we look forward to having a professional stand up and say that. 
Uh, so with that being said, uh, I just ask that a public hearing be set so we can move forward, have uh, the entire public heard, and we can also present with some other uh, professional design partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Corn Rome. Right, I'm sorry. My name is William Corn Rome. I live at 335 Terrace Road in West Hill. And the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to, uh, to thank our, our town for having a good uh, person in place at, at the, at the uh, supervisor of, of the roads. <coughs> Uh, he's been able to maintain our road system well beyond its service life. He, uh, he gets in there every year, he gets in and he patches the potholes, and he, and he is able to do that, but he's not able to maintain it and, and uh, fill in all of the cracks to reduce the amount of damage that happens the next year. Every year it's the same thing. By, by the time we get to about January, the potholes have come back again because they just pop back out. I happen to be a bicycle rider and I walk uh, for, in, in the winter time, I walk for my exercise and to keep in good shape. And in the winter time, it's dark out, both in the morning and in the evening when I'm walking. And it's very difficult to see a black hole on a black surface during a black night. And, it, and it's really unsafe. And in the summertime, before he gets them patched, the, these potholes are really dangerous for somebody riding a bicycle. We have 84 houses on that subdivision. It's a unique subdivision. And of those, at least 75 of them are up a hill. It's West Hill. The majority of us are up there. So if you're on a bicycle, you're going downhill. It's the only way to go. And, and that means potholes and cracks. And cracks in the road to somebody who's not a bicyclist Ah, what's a little crack? Right? You know, a, a tire for a car is, is six inches wide. Well, a crack that's one inch wide will grab a one inch bicycle tire and put you on the ground. And I've gone on the ground, not in West Hill, but I've, I've experienced this. And I have to, you know, ride way out in the middle of the road. So I have to just with you to work together. I, I've read in the, in the Gazette that, that there's money available, but there's no plan to spend it. And, and this, we, we just need to get, you know, our town government together and get this done. And that's my, my, my request for you. Thank you, Mike. Jim Grangelo. <clears throat> Good evening, welcome to Junctions. I mean, it's been a while, I think. But uh, unfortunately, that was a place center for another woman who was supposed to come in here and complain about something. She stood me up. Hasn't, it's not the first time. But uh, so, as they say in Facebook, I'm speaking for a friend. Uh, what is the zoning for having, uh, I'll, be, I'll be specific, chickens and roosters as opposed to any other people? <coughs> as long as it's not agriculture. So residential neighborhood, what is the zoning? I'll be glad to take a, a number or a, a statute or something. We can look at it ourselves, but that's the question. Okay. Do you have any other questions before that's I answer it? Okay. Okay. So I'll answer that question, and then uh, we'll, I'll engage with you for another minute, because I like you too. So no, in all seriousness, um, the problem in Rotterdam for many years, and it precedes my tenure on the board and everybody else here, so many of the people who live here have lived here for a long time, and others are, are newer. When I say newer, as a homeowner, you're newer, right? 
right? You know, whether, whether you've been here for 50 years or 20 years. In other words, the town never really did anything as far as rezoning the town when it needed to. The town did not plan its infrastructure properly. The town did not plan its particular sewer infrastructure properly. That's one of the reasons why you don't have a lot of one family development. Why? Because the economics aren't there. The economics are not there for a developer to come into Rotterdam because there's no source. So the sewers where you need them, where there's vacant land. You could build one family developments all day long, but we don't have that. And that's that's the issue on that. As far as the zoning piece here and in other areas. Agricultural, yes, you can have fall, you can have um, the problem here is you have residential and then right behind it agricultural, basically in the same property. So you have some of that happening here in, in this part of the project. You also have RA zoning, which is residential agricultural. You go to some of the newer developments in town, and there are people there that have have have, uh, have chickens and other uh, livestock, and the people across the street don't like it, but they're all in that in that zoning. That's allowed there, and so. Um, the comp plan is uh, is the ticket to addressing all of these issues. The what is? The, the comp comprehensive plan. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Comprehensive plan. So updating the comprehensive plan is it. Because frankly, um, when you look at the junction or you look again at other parts of Rotterdam where you have either ag, where there's one family homes down and they may still be zoned in some way agricultural, whether it's the RA designation or agricultural designation. And here you have properties that are along 5S here that are, are residential in front and agricultural in back. Makes no sense whatsoever. You're either residential or you're agricultural. I mean, here it's residential. I mean, I'll just say, like, from my perspective, this area uh, is residential. You go past the Bridge Street, you could say, you know what, that's ag. You stay on this side of Bridge Street and say that you're you're pretty residential here. And obviously, you get your industrial uses with. SI and, and some other, other properties. So fine-tuning the zoning will happen through the comprehensive planning process. And it's not something where the comp board is just going to say, okay, we're done, we had our comp plan meetings, we did this, we did that, here's your new comp plan. Here's where your zoning is going to be. There's going to be more public engagement, and I'm going to say more fine-tuning. Because particularly here, and again, some of the other neighborhoods that have this split zoning or this RA designation, uh, that has to happen in order for people to do to, to two things, not only enjoy their properties um, for what they're, what they're to be used for, which is in, in, in this respect, in this regard here, the properties you're talking about, because I know what you're, what you're talking about, they're residential, they're not agricultural. And uh, from, a, from a, you know, sales perspective, how do I, how can I sell my house if, you know, in, in, in that kind of predicament? And obviously here you still have some properties that are, um, unfortunately, uh, still suffering from those storms and, and, and from, from many years ago. And we still have properties that need more code enforcement. I mean, you're giving away too much enforcement. information, but just simply, if it's if it's a pure residential, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, if it's, it's residential, not it's not a lot period in the story. Okay. I understand that. Yeah, but like I said, your problem here, Jim, is you've got, you got front product, product properties are residential, the back parts are ag. I agree. Yeah, so, I you know, I can have my chicken coops back here, and I can I can live right here. And I, it doesn't matter what the neighbors got. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that's where we are. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 it'll be adjusted. Right. Okay, is there anyone else that has public comment? Is there anyone else that wants to be heard for a couple of minutes here before I close public comment purposes the floor? Anyone? Okay. All right, let's uh, go into the into the uh, Cole's public comment privilege before then, and we'll go into the order first, and then uh, okay. we'll get back to the agenda here. We'll go to the order first, and then to the rest of the resolution. So, Ms. Marco? A resolution and order for Plotter Kill Fire Department SEQRA and establishment of the Plotter Kill Fire Department in the town. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Supervisor, I make a motion. A second. Okay, a motion for the order by Mr. Christou, second by Mr. Signor. Anyone on the question? I just wanted to say that I, I participated in that joint public hearing between the town of Princetown and the town of Rotterdam. Uh, their attorney did a very nice job of explaining the value of creating uh, the fire district, I believe it was called, versus yeah. the fire department that it is now. It basically takes the town board out of the fire business and puts it in the hands of those very qualified volunteer firefighters for that district. 
because, again, that property line runs between both municipalities. It had to be a joint public hearing, and it had to be a joint decision. And now we have the responsibility of each making our separate approvals. Okay, Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Cristo? Yes. Mr. Gitterelli's absent. Mrs. Miller Herrera's absent. Mr. Signor? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Three yes, two absent. Okay, order of passes. Okay, first resolution? A resolution to appoint Victor Moya as the Director of Public Works. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Cristo. Is there a second, please? A second. Second by Mr. Signor. Anyone on the question? Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Cristo? Yes. Mr. Gitterelli's absent. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Signor? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Three yes, two absent. Okay, resolution passes. Next resolution, please. A resolution to appoint Camilla Hayes as the coordinator of Parks and Senior Programs. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Mr. Supervisor, I make the motion. Okay. Second. Motion by Mr. Cristo, second by Mr. Signor. Anyone on the question? Okay, Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Cristo? Yes. Mr. Gitterelli absent. Mrs. Miller Herrera absent. Mr. Signor? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Three yes, one absent. Okay, resolution passes. Now we have a consent agenda for the remaining resolutions. And I just want to mention a couple of things. So, you know, here this evening we heard uh, basically you know, the, the Planning Commission, for example, the 2625 Prairie Road, or with other, I'll say, business before the Planning Commission where there's limited or no ability in particular for the public to address their concerns. The Town Board is the body for those concerns. For us to call for a public hearing for, a, uh, for anything doesn't mean that that's going to, that uh, action's going to be taken. It's a public hearing so that we can hear the public and comments can be detailed. It's also an opportunity for uh, the town to consider whether or not there needs to be a, a, a greater uh, review from an environmental perspective and all those things. So there's a lot of other it, it, you know, matters that will be uh, cons uh, say considered uh, in those public hearings. Uh, so, so that resolution, as far as you know, is on here to call for a public hearing. It doesn't mean that the zone something will be changed. When it comes to the painting, there's a lot I could say, but I'm going to be very simplistic. Um, uh, the the uh, tax cap in our community, the state tax cap, makes it very, very difficult for the town to, I'll say, appropriate funding where um, maybe it needs to be. You know, if you, you're in a position where you can properly inform the public that, you know, uh, rather than a 2%, raise a 2.5 or 3% or 4% might get you the additional capital that you need for debt service, for example, if the town were to borrow a large sum of money for paving. You know, we're doing core sampling finally. Uh, the town, I think, is uh, in the, in the, going in the right direction there. Because you can't just put something over the top of it. It'd be just like you're putting a piece of sheetrock over a wall in your house when you don't know what's behind it. Whether it's insulated or not, whatever the case may be. Same thing with our roads. You have no idea what's underneath it. So how can you just pay over the top of it? That's why these roads are crum crumbling, frankly. Because some of these roads need to be completely redone, need to be reground and repaved. Mm -hmm. we, could, we could talk about processes all the time. Um, the highway superintendent can't just make that determination, I'm sorry. The town, board is, it, the town board's responsibility is to make sure that your tax dollars are spent appropriately. That's why we're course sampling. That's why we hired an engineer. That's why we're moving ahead with the director of public works. Because frankly, it hasn't been um, as um, transparent as it should be. I'll just say that, the paving process in our community for the last decade or so. Having said that, the town, um, I've mentioned at prior board meetings, and whether, whether you know this or not, it doesn't matter at this point. I won't be on the ballot in November. You can determine that with your next town board. I've said multiple times, if we had core sampling, if we had the process for each road, you know what the process is for each road, whether it needs to be completely torn apart, redone, whether we need to rebase the road and then top it, whatever the case may be. You can't just go in there and put a skim coat on it because it's going to come, it's going to come apart again. You can't just keep going over potholes. Come to my road, too. I, I've been in your, I know your, your, your neighbors. I know. Paul Avenue, our base is great. The top of the road, shut. But it's costly to pave it. In order to catch up on the paving in Rotterdam, the town would have to borrow and, and to be able to stay within the tax cap and do a number of other cuts in the budget to stay where we need to stay. 
because our revenues are short this year. Um, we would have to borrow a large sum of money, whether it's a million, two million, whatever the case may be. But then at least with core sampling, once you core sample the roads, once you know what you have, you can then determine a, a real plan for 5, 10, 15 years, 20 years. And you can say, these are the roads that need to be done this year, next year, et cetera, going forward. And these are the times in the future when the town needs to borrow an additional half a million, one million, two million dollars, whatever, whatever it takes. But you won't get there by just having, frankly, and I'm not trying to be uh, disingenuous or, 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 uh, or disrespectful, but by just having the highway superintendent determine where roads are paid and which ones aren't because of the amount of money that he has in the budget. Can't do it. It's the wrong approach. It's wrong for everybody in town. It's not fair to the highway superintendent to make that decision by himself, frankly, without professional help. It's not good. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's, it's not. Uh, um, I never expected it. Good. No. 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 I, no, no Mr. Cohen, you know. I, I know. I know. And and I'm not saying that. that's not what I'm saying. I expect an engineering company by someone like Cloud Harbor. You expect somebody to come in and, and, and do something, and, and that's what we're doing. And that's and that's what we're doing. Exactly right. I'm with you. And then some new developments also, frankly, roads were accepted in the past by past highway superintendents that did not meet the test at all. And so we're still battling with those. So anyway, I, I, I'm done with my comments. Let's go right to the resolutions. Ms. Marco, would you? Uh, Mr. Supervisor, may I make a resolution? May I, may I make a motion to accept the remaining resolutions as a consent agenda? Okay, consent agenda by Mr. Christou. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Signor. Okay, anyone on that question here? Okay, Ms. Marco, call the roll for consent agenda. Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Kitarelli, absent. Mrs. Bill Guerrero, absent. Mr. Signor? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Yes. Two absent. Okay, now we have the consent agenda. Can we have a, a motion for the consent agenda? Please? Mr. Supervisor, I make a motion to accept the remaining consent agenda. Okay, motion by Mr. Christo. Is there a second? A second. A second by Mr. Signor. Okay, any, any further discussion? Okay, Ms. Mark, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Christo? Yes. Mr. Guerrero absent. Mrs. Willow Herrera absent. Mr. Signor? Yes. And Mr. Thompson? Yes. Yes. Okay, do either of you have anything other committee reports or miscellaneous? Uh, and, and I want to say that I, I, have, I have many comments that, that I'll make at the next meeting um, regarding, regarding uh, zoning and other things. And, uh, and frankly, when uh, You know, people want to take take and label you something without really considering you know, what you know, they say that's you know, say that you're something. Or, you know, I have, I got I received a uh, I don't know on Facebook, but someone sent something. Which they called me you know, Deep Spot Zone Thomas on. I, I I thought that was great because at least the guy can rhyme. But anyway, um, I'm not for spot zoning. Spot zoning basically means this very simply: this you're in a, a completely industrial, uh, completely residential area, and somebody's got a 50 by 150 piece of property and they're going to zone industrial. That's spot zoning. Spot zoning is not rezoning a 10 acre piece of property on Curry Road and, and Hamburg Street or on the other side of Carmen Road or anywhere else. That's not spot zoning. That's taking into account when you're rezoning the, the uh, you have to take the call what the comprehensive plan says currently, what the comprehensive plan uh, should include. And when you look at, at anywhere in, this, in, in, the, in the capital district, I don't care where you go within a mile or two miles off of an exit, and I would ask you to just, you know, consider consider that. that uh, you see a lot of mixed use, and that's that's those areas, those areas off the exit are, are mixed use, and I, and I think that's part of the that's part of the the conversation that we have to have um, when it comes to. Uh, well, I'll save my comments for next meeting. That's it. Any, uh, so, can you make a motion? Is there a supervisor make a motion to adjourn? Are you uh, seconding? I'm in second. Seconding. Okay, second by Mr. Signor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it.